Hey everyone, welcome to Open Mic. Today, Paige Armstrong. Play. <laughs> Son, <laughs> I feel like we've done this before. <laughs> it feels like it. Yeah, it feels, it feels like, like it. it. Welcome to the show, buddy. Thank we, you. I can say we because uh, my buddy Mark, who was with that night, is actually in the audience tonight. Oh, um, there he is. Yeah, there yeah. He is. <laughs> yeah he's, he's behind the other person. Uh, we saw you at uh, Club 55, an uh, open, uh, open mic night. Yeah, you got up. Uh, Mark was the first one to say, Man, This guy is awesome. He reminds me of Colin James. And which oh, is kind of funny because <laughs> you're a big, big compliment. Co yeah, yeah, you're a, yeah, and uh, and then you've started playing, look, uh, staying, started playing Brandy by Looking Glass, and that that's caught right. my attention because that's like one of the greatest one hit wonder bands. For oh, me. thank you. Yeah, yeah. That, oh, I love it. Love the, that song. The, the fact that you knew the words too was even great cooler. Story. Great lyrical song. Yeah. No, but that, yeah, we saw you there, and uh, I asked you to be on the show immediately, and I really appreciate you being here. Turn now, it turns out I got a new friends. So whether, yes, whether no, you like great. it or not. <laughs> I'm new to the area, and you, yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, but I, I, but uh, your musical background is amazing. Like you pay, play full time with uh, Shakira Saeda. Yeah, and uh, I know I got it right. <laughs> so, Shakira Saeda. Shakira. Yep, yeah. and uh, you also have uh, another uh, band on the side, like a Motown band, Legends of Motown. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of fun. Jeez, uh, you're actually going soon to uh, New Orleans to play, right? With Shakira, yeah, going How? down there. How long, you, how long have you been playing and how did this unfold, man? Because, like, you played with some legends, too. Yeah, I, I've done the circuits. I've I've done bars, cruise ships, hotel contracts, and then uh, the opportunity to, to play for Shakura came up and I jumped on it. I, I asked to audition, so to yeah. speak, and um, she gave me a chance and it was amazing. I I don't look back. I, like, it's been the best time. Like, honestly, she's she's made me grow and as a player and as a performer and also just as someone who appreciates music i love it i love your outfits too I, yeah i like i like the call silver. and response i like the silver <laughs> yes call and response it, 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 who's this this is a company in toronto who, 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 who does your outfits custom made all they, really? they did prints they've done so many uh like musicians to Actors, like so many people. Oh, cool! Because it suits like her. You know what oh, I mean? Like, yeah, like, you got it. Because she's stuff. she's just looking at her. She looks funky. She looks like she just looks like uh, someone who commands a stage. So you kind of have to be not too much, but just enough to hold hold your own with her. It seems like oh, she's definitely a performer and entertainer. She's also an actress on the side, so oh, really? she does that as well. So oh, nice. That's obviously in her, her blood, so she's uh, must, must be a lot of fun, eh? Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I just keep the feel real as best I can, and she brings it out of me to uh, play with from the soul, from the heart. That's awesome. Now, with playing that, because uh, you're obviously a big blues lover, big Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yes. <laughs> and that's kind of her genre of music, too, so oh, that's okay. why I, I was drawn to it. Oh, that's perfect, because I was, I, I was going to ask, is it difficult to go from funk uh, which is uh, more of a big band setting where you blend with you've got to blend with all the music, but then uh, if you're in funk, yeah, yeah, like it's it, I always like that big band stuff where it's just uh, you hear the instruments, but they blend so beautifully together. Even yeah. like the vocals, everything is absolutely perfect. I just uh, but then with your talking about Steve Ray Vaughan, he's got his backing band which hold their own, but he's still like this set this like the center stage is the guitar, right? Yeah, and and as a as a Stevie fan, like I loved his his solos and stuff, but he was very funky as well, yeah, and rhythmic see. in his solos as well. But I, I got a lot of funk influence from LMT, which is local to uh, yeah to the, to the area. Yeah, yeah, as you're saying, LMT you, connection. Yeah. They're like I saw them for ten years every Wednesday at the Orbit Room, and uh, I was a bartender there at the time, and at Leroy was like teaching me, schooling me every time I saw him, and That's awesome. he's just. King of the Funk, you know, and the, the whole band is amazing. So well, that's fantastic. Did you have you ever gotten stage with them? Yeah, oh, many yeah? times when Leroy's away or I sit in with the band. Um, just the other night I did, and and ah, oh, it's just great guys, great music, a lot of fun. 
Oh, fantastic. That's what I love about it. But it's it's more on a funky basis, but blues influenced as well. Now, how about the Motown band? <laughs> Motown, Steve Cropper and uh, Funk Brothers stuff. Uh, I keep it up. I do my best. I play Telecaster in that. And, yeah. um, but it's different lines uh, that it's, I got to... Is it all covers or is it? It's is all, it, covers all covers okay. and it's Temptations, Four Tops, Supremes. Um, Do y'all wear matching Martha. suits? They do. Uh, uh, we do. Yeah, we have tux tuxedos in the rhythm section. Nice, nice, and, nice. Um, um, I, I, I think we talked about this on a conversation earlier. Uh, is there pips involved? There are. Yeah, they're dancing and doing everything, and, and it's it's fantastic production. Because I love Gladys Knight. The, the pips just are. Oh yeah, they're the, they're the best. We do some Gladys. <laughs> and, That's uh, right. Actually, what did she say? She they asked her. They asked her. If she ever danced? And one time, the pips said, "You know what." Leave the dancing best. Leave the dancing, yeah. No, you just, that's how you, it is. You just, you just sing, all right? right. <laughs> no, definitely. I, it's, I can't go wrong with classic music. Like no. In the 60s. It's just beautiful. But you, like you were saying earlier too, like when growing up and stuff, you were doing a lot of like Eddie Van Halen. We're talking about older guitars you had. You had like a Music Man. Right, yep. Yeah. Uh, learning the guitar, I started, um, my first guitar god was Clapton. Um, through my dad, introduced me to Clapton. And then um, got into Colin James, yeah, and saw him with a little big band one, and I think when I was twelve, and I was like, he he walked out, he had this wireless, and he was playing a Stratocaster, and it was blues influenced and, and big band, and it was just, I want to do that, you yeah. know, what he was doing, and then kind of through Colin, I got into Steve Ray Vaughan when I was well, like, yeah, it is 13. it is appropriate, Cause, uh, yeah, because uh, yeah, because uh, uh, he discovered both. Or he brought him, both him and Jeff Healy with them, right? Steve, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Found, he, he discovered Colin and brought Jeff down. And uh, yeah, they, I, they were all very close. But um, And then, you know, going back down the chain, and there's so many great blues guitar gods, but uh, it's probably Hendrix that influenced a lot of Stevie. Yeah. And then, of course, definitely. Albert yeah. King and all the kings. So it was just like, you just kind of go back, all the way back. But uh, so as a guitarist, yeah, I, I went through a bit of a Van Halen phase and... and Grade ten, I think it was. It can only expand your. Like, the more you know, the more you can add to. You, like well, the more you can create something of your own, right? Yeah. When you first hear Eddie Van Halen on the guitar, you're like, "What is that?" And then it was just kind of like, "Oh, it is doable." I could never do a lick of it now because yeah. it's just I went a total different direction. And when I heard Steve Ray Vaughan, it just kind of it's just like, okay, no more distortion, just loud tube amp and a Stratocaster and a tube screamer. You know, and that was kind of where was, I, I, I just wanted to go in that direction. Do you know what I'm dying to hear? What's that? You're going to think I'm going to say SRV, right? Steve Ray Vaughan? No, no, no. I want to hear some of the funky stuff. Funky? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no problem, man. Yeah, that's uh, what I got. I got to hear a bit of it. You got the yeah. right guitar and everything for it, so let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> The the like the individual notes are great, but it's that percussive background you hear, yeah. just uh, hitting the muted strings. I love it. That's uh, it's like slap. It's yeah, like, it's just it's like slap bass almost, you know. But I I'm not. That's not really what I'm good at or anything. But I, yeah, funky. It's just, it's more in the rhythm hand for sure. So you like uh, you you have a lot of guitars. This I know. A few. Uh, a few. But uh, your two main ones are the Tully and Strat. Um, uh, I. I the, Guitars kind of go with the job that I have to do as a jobbing, like as a musician that jobs a lot, jobs yeah. a lot, I guess. Um, personally, I prefer playing Stratocaster if I'm playing in my own sort of project or music that influences me um, with covers or originals. But if I'm filling in for Leroy with LMT, it's a 335 and a oh, okay. and yeah. um, Motown band or the Stax band. I also play with the Stax band. And I'll play the Telecaster with that. So yeah. with Shakura, um, it's generally a Stratocaster. Yeah, I can see it being the Stratocaster. It's a Stratocaster. Yeah, it's got, it's got the right sound for her. Yeah, and, and her music is a range of tones as well, but um, nothing crazy. But it's 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 yeah, I, I can get cleans, I can get uh, overdrive as well. So this is uh, this is beautiful. This is a custom shop, a 1960, right? This is a 1960 custom shop I got in 2006. 
And it didn't look this way when I got it. It, um, it was a relic um, and it had a little bit of wear right here, but as soon as I played it, uh, I just fell in love with it. it. Felt like an old baseball mitt. It, but, actually, uh, you know what? I gotta say, they did a smack, or maybe it's the, the playing you've done, but I know a gentleman, uh, he's been on the show, he has a 64, an original 64. Right. And I love the back there, that, that this right here, that yellow. Yeah. Uh, that's, it looks just like what his has. And, yeah, the uh, yellow, like most of that's natural, wear, like it has yeah. wear here. And uh, like this is all, it's thin nitro finish on these guitars. So the wood really breathes out. And I just, I, it's pretty much stock. I've put a five way switch on it, a treble bleed on the volume pot. So just. Yeah. It yeah. keeps the top end when I roll the volume down. Oh, okay. So I'll just do it. And then. Oh, okay. The, the top end's still there, but the um, I've also changed the tone pot to the bridge pickup. Right. Uh, on the, so. And because uh, they don't come stock that way. And other than that, just a different nut and different frets. This is the second fret job. Yeah, you got jumbo frets on there, right? These are jumbo yeah, and they're stainless steel. They, they, they feel great. Yeah, they, you know, they, they took some getting used to, but I have them on a couple other guitars, and, and I kind of prefer them now. Just got used to it. What's your main amps? I know actually you play you play several at the same time, right? You like getting a whole bunch of different At sounds. home I do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, live, not so much, because it would. I just don't play a lot of venues that have that. Yeah. Um, that that space where I can play at that volume, <laughs> yeah. But because I usually dial them to about six to seven, and and there's like a super reverb, a vibe reverb, obviously Stevie Ray Vaughan influenced. Yeah, I have a custom amp that was built for me, uh, by a guy in Toronto, um, guy, and he goes by ampguy.ca. Wow. Amazing custom oh. amp. It's it's based off of a a Dumble style amp. Oh, okay, all hand wired and everything. All hand wired. It, it just gorgeous tones out of it and then um i actually have an old trainer as well yeah uh, for a leslie speaker but um when i'm normally gig my main amp um and this is just because it's light uh, compared to everything else i have and it's easy to, to take is a blues deluxe fender blues deluxe standard uh, from the 90s yeah but i changed the speaker to an ev yeah. and it's just a bit more efficient and the low end's really tight and i, I just found using more water speakers is yeah, you like to get that natural gain. I know you're. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to like so much on so much pedals, but when you practice, you have a sheet of plexiglass in front of them and yeah, and, uh, you, and earplugs just so <laughs> definitely. But it makes sense if you're gonna practice. If you're gonna practice, you want to practice at the tone you'd be playing on stage, right? Yeah, but generally I'm not that loud on stage. Oh no. Yeah, no, it, because microphones are so efficient today. And yeah, they're true. So good, and they don't even need to. You you could go with a five watt amp and yeah. play to the Air Canada Center or the Scotia Bank Center, you know. Oh yeah. Well, it's yeah, yeah. yeah. I, grew, I, I grew up with the sky dome well, and the just said, that's all good. I'm gonna give you, like, I don't think care what you're playing through because you're playing through an AC10 right now. It sounds great. And uh, it is. Uh, I bet you because you know how it is. You always know who it is. Like if Steve Ray Vaughan was to play whatever, it would sound like Steve Ray Vaughan. Yeah, and so, I always gravitate towards my influences. So like hearing like a, anything comparing me to Steve Ray Vaughan is like the biggest compliment in the world. To me, obviously, don't come close <laughs> because I, I I know a lot of great, great players out there that um, through the music of Steve Ray Vaughan I've connected with, and they're definitely influenced by them, and I love them. They're just phenomenal players. Tell us, actually, I want to hear just, uh, we talked about it. Some of the greats you've played with, you've had the, you've had a blessed life, like that for sure. And you, and yeah. and actually, what I love about you is how you're so humble about it. Like the humility is insane with you, and it's so nice. But you. Who, who who are the some of the big ones? I already know, but <laughs> yeah, no. I, well, I like a, we, with Shakura, especially she's. Yeah. Um, we've opened for Buddy Guy and Eric Gales, who's a current guitar hero, Kingfish. Uh, yeah, Kingfish is a he's insane. He's this great up and coming kid. I toured with Julie Black in oh, two thousand nine wow. and ten, and then like that's the one thing I love about all these players that I get to meet. Um, they just they're so humble, and I I love them. Like they're just they. You could ask them any question about gear, pedals, whatever they're using, and they'll tell you. There's no secret to it. Um, I got to play with uh, another great guitar hero of mine, and that's Philip Sace. Yeah, yeah, a long yeah. Time yeah, ago, yeah in you like were 2004. And um, you still talk to him? I can, yeah, I can yeah. text him, and and I and I, I do, and I and he gives me tips, and and he he's pretty exposed now on the internet with like showing what he's using and stuff. 
and definitely someone who's influenced. He played with Jeff Healy when he was really young and yeah. uh, got to tour with Jeff and learn a lot from him. But Philip is just one of those guys that uh, he, he took things to another level for me. And um, why don't you, but why don't you show us a, show us something? Let's uh, let's show us a little something that that he showed you. Oh, you know, like, on the spot, Philip. <laughs> I, I just, this. I'm just trying to find an excuse for you to play the guitar. Honestly, okay, I, yeah. I could have said go Whoa. and end after 15 minutes. Like, and thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. Yeah, Philip. What what I learned from Philip is is um, and it's it's hard to do in a situation like this. I sometimes have to really build myself up to get close to his his uh, range of playing. But yeah. but I mean. Um, it's it's digging in, and that's generally how, especially when I'm I've got a strap on and I'm standing. Up. So Philip showed me this. So you're playing eights, right? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right. No, this, this is, uh, it's 11 to 58, yep. and it's tuned down half a step right now, but um, that's only because when I'm just moving here to Niagara region, I'm yep. just like going to my backing tracks of like any blues or whatever, and sometimes it's Hendrix and it's in E flat, and I'm like, all right. Yeah, there it is. So, it. so you just moved here recently, right? Yes. So you're doing, uh, you're doing lessons, you said? You're also on, uh, you're also on your Instagram. Uh, you got you're doing little riffs and stuff. What's what's the? Uh, it's uh, Paige Armstrong Woodshed okay. on Instagram. And Mark, did you hear that? Okay. <laughs> it's basically I just you know what it, I see so many phenomenal players. Yeah. But then they don't really show what they're doing. Yeah. And um, for me, it's like here's a lick, here's a riff, here's a song, and this is what I'm doing. So I'll, I'll kind of have a couple video clips where I slow it down. So you can cut and and because it's Instagram, it plays over and over again. I'm not making any money off it or anything. It's just to give yeah, back. No, it's just, it's well, just. I wish someone showed me when yeah, I was yeah, for sure. Guitar. And yeah, you have all all the stories you're telling me have been phenomenal. I wish we had more time to talk about them, but kind of getting to the end. But we will be seeing you at like open jam nights. It's a great community. I, I discovered yeah. here. Everyone's, everyone's. Well, I do a lot of solo acoustic as well. Oh, right on. And. Uh, you kind of have to do a bit of everything when you're when you're being a musician full time. So oh, yeah. I I do teach on the side. Yeah, and uh, I do personal training as well. Oh yeah, I'm getting back into that. And then um, when I'm not touring, and so yeah, just I, I try to stay homebound and and play locally. And yeah, I'm looking forward to the to the area and meeting a lot of people here. Well, thank you so much, right? Thank you. I, mean, I really appreciate it. Uh, phenomenal playing i i oh, I, I love it I, that tone that that deep tone it's digging into it tone, it is, it's know, fantastic it's, I, I like position four but um you know I, they say tones in the burgers it's yes. in the fingers right so uh you want to play us out sure yeah, all right just do something a little original <laughs> Oh, no. The fade out is happening.